Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Lily, aka Lily Koi. I make videos about health and well-being from diet and other lifestyle factors to emotional and mental factors and spiritual well-being. Every now and then some beauty videos get thrown in. A lot gets covered over here. If any of that sounds appealing to you, hit that subscribe button, ding the little bell so you can stay up to date with my videos. I'm back for another short and sweet Q&A video and I feel myself instinctively leaning in towards the camera and the microphone because there's a little bit of a random windstorm here in Hawaii today. I'm not quite sure where it came from, but it is a bit of a blessing after all of the rain. You can just dry everything out and get rid of the mold, but I'm not sure if it's going to affect the sound quality. If it is, I apologize. So I'm asked so often about protein powders. Used to protein powders were these like awful things created from like whey protein isolate, which was pretty much just a brilliant way for the cheese industry to offload all of the whey that is a byproduct of cheese production. Just another way that industry made humans eat garbage. But nowadays, even us vegans have tons of protein powders to choose from. We can get, I mean, a freaking pea protein or hemp protein or soy protein isolates if you want to be all old school about it. And because of our cultural obsession with protein, a lot of people who come to a vegan diet get really stressed out about, oh my god, am I gonna get enough protein? Oh my god, I'm gonna die of a protein deficiency. And even if you're not freaking out, I guarantee that there's someone in your family who has used the PD word on you. Honey, you're gonna get a protein deficiency. What about the protein deficiency? Look, Ma, I know that this can be stressful, but literally, no one's getting a protein deficiency. Nobody who's eating enough food. So way back, back in the day, protein was discovered and everyone was like, oh my God, it's so important because it's in everything. We must have to eat so much of this stuff. And they just, like, scientists just kind of, like, threw out a guess. Like, hey, I think we need, like, 150 grams of this stuff every day. Let's make sure that we're eating tons and tons of protein. So that's what everybody who could afford high-protein foods did. And guess what? They got diabetes <laughs> and heart disease and high cholesterol and... But anyway, nutritional scientists nowadays have a little bit better of an idea about actual human protein needs and international health-related organizations have determined that human beings thrive on about 0.8 to 0.9 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. So to break that down, I am just south of 120 pounds, depending on how much I have eaten that day. And so a woman my size would do well on about 50 grams of protein a day. It's actually a little bit less, but I'll just round it off nice even number, 50 grams a day. And as a woman who eats about 2,200 calories per day to maintain and or lose weight, because I've been losing weight for the last five years, it is perfectly easy for me to eat 2,200 calories of whole plant foods every day and end up with 60 to 80 grams of protein per day in my diet. That's without trying, without eating purposefully high protein foods. That's without eating any isolated protein supplements whatsoever. So numbers wise, there's not a nutritional gap. There aren't two different types of human beings. There's not one type that needs very little protein and one type that needs tons of protein. That just hasn't been found and human populations have been studied pretty darn well and there's just not a subtype of human being that needs excessive amounts of protein. But that still doesn't stop people from thinking, oh well, you know, well I want to gain muscle or I exercise a lot, I must need more protein. No, you actually don't. Your body is perfectly capable of taking protein from the f whole plant foods that you are eating and creating more muscle mass if you are exercising and putting your muscles under stress. Certainly there are some genetic variations. It's easier for some people to build muscle than others. That's just the way that they're born, the way that they're built. A lot of bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts try to get around that by eating massive amounts of protein because they think it's going to bulk them up. And truthfully, 
eating tons of protein actually can help you bulk up because eating tons of protein, especially animal proteins or isolated plant proteins, raise levels of human growth hormone and insulin-like growth factor, both of which promote tissue growth. Now this can be helpful if you want to gain a bunch of muscle, but it also puts you at a higher risk for developing cancerous tumors and developing acne and skin tags and any other disease that's associated with excess tissue growth. So if you decide to go that route and you decide to try to fight your genetics and you decide to try to bulk yourself up with huge amounts of protein, just know that you're putting your health at risk. You'll also be putting your kidneys under a fair bit of stress because protein is acidifying and acidifying substances damage the kidneys. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, I just think it's wise to be aware of the consequences of your choices. But I do bump into a fair number of people, especially people who uh, haven't familiarized themselves with literature like How Not to Die or Whole by T. Colin Campbell or any of the other really solid plant-based literature that is available. A lot of people still say, yes, but I feel better when I eat more protein. Why is that? It's usually for one of a few reasons. First, a lot of people eat really high protein foods when they're putting themselves on a diet. Since high protein foods help to suppress the appetite, it can actually make caloric restriction easier. However, since science and experience has told us that Caloric restriction doesn't work for long-term weight loss. There's always a metabolic kickback. There's, generally speaking, always weight gain. At the end of a diet, there's no way around it. Then the whole caloric restriction and protein helping to suppress your appetite during caloric restriction is kind of a moot point. Another reason could be that as a lot of people come onto a vegan diet, they just stop eating enough food. They, they cut out a bunch of stuff and they don't replace it with the less calorically dense volume of food that they need to consume on a vegan diet in order to feel satisfied and in order to fulfill their body's caloric needs. When this happens, a lot of times cravings come up and the body remembers high calorie foods and oftentimes those high calorie foods are also high protein foods. And so they end up experiencing cravings for foods that coincidentally contain a lot of protein along with the other macronutrients it contains. And people will interpret this as, oh, my body just needs protein in order to feel good. Another thing that can happen is that as people try to clean up their diets or move towards a whole plant food diet, oftentimes they cut out higher protein foods and with those foods they end up inadvertently cutting out other ingredients as well. That could be high fat foods, high salt foods, sugary foods, calorically dense foods, artificial sweeteners, caffeine, or any other chemical that can exert a dependent or addictive type effect. So when those types of foods or chemicals start to exit the body, oftentimes they will create a withdrawal effect and you end up getting headaches, you feel sluggish, tired, nauseated, and a lot of people interpret those feelings, those feelings of detoxification, as a need for more dietary protein. Similar feelings of tiredness or headaches or general malaise can come about when people are calorie restricting, which often happens on diets or accidentally when they switch to a vegan diet. So when you're switching diets, it's really important to make sure that you're eating enough. When you switch to a whole plant food diet, the volume of food that you are capable and allowed to eat and need to eat is much bigger. So make sure you're eating enough. So it can help to use like a calorie tracking app in the beginning to make sure that you are getting enough food to fulfill your body's caloric needs and thus help you to feel satisfied. But what's the big problem with protein powders? I mean, other than being like a profound waste of money, protein powders are highly, highly processed. They're some of the most processed foods on the planet. I always get a good chuckle when I see the protein powders that say like made from whole foods. It's like, yeah, everything on the planet is made from whole foods, frosted flakes are made from whole foods. So I always laugh because it's like, sure, at one point it was a whole food, it's not anymore because it's in powder form. 
And when you read the ingredient labels of protein powders, even like the really good high-end, high-quality vegan protein powders, there are isolated proteins involved. Like it's either isolated pea protein or isolated soy protein or hemp protein. Some food has been broken apart and had its protein removed to be added to this protein powder to make it rich in protein in the first place. Now, I don't know if you ever tried them, but plain old isolated proteins don't have the most palatable taste. So what happens is they have to add in ingredients to make it taste palatable. Generally speaking, that ends up being a lot of sugar. More often than not, it turns into a ton of artificial sweeteners. Those were covered in a recent video. You can watch that video if you want to get some more details about my thoughts on artificial sweeteners. But long story short, don't do it. And as I mentioned a moment ago, those isolated proteins are definitely implicated in increases of human growth hormone and insulin-like growth factor. They also stress the kidneys. And oftentimes there are a lot of isolated nutrient supplements added into these protein powders like vitamin C, vitamin E, the B vitamins, all very popular. And while a lot of people feel like they may be filling in nutritional gaps that they could have, it's like, oh, it's like drinking a daily multivitamin. Unfortunately not. Those isolated nutrient supplements do not react in the body synergistically as they do in whole plant foods. And because they lack that synergistic cooperation, they don't have the same positive effects as the nutrients that are found in whole plant foods. So you can end up actually doing some damage to your body instead of helping your body thrive, okay? So human beings are just perfectly well adapted to survive on a whole plant food diet. We don't need excess protein supplementation in addition to what we can get from whole plant foods. These powders are highly, highly processed. Generally speaking, they end up containing questionable ingredients like isolated proteins, sweeteners, sugar, or artificial sweeteners. And no matter what the label says, it's not a whole food whole foods don't come powdered so save your money use that money for healthy whole plant foods that are actually going to nourish your body encourage health help your body with detoxification hormone balance all that goodness and whatever you do don't listen to your ma about the protein deficiency all right you guys thanks for watching like share subscribe you guys pretty much know the drill at this point until next time make better choices for your lovely selves and take really, really good care. I will see you all sooner than you may think. Bye!